lend you ten pounds until next payday. God, could yourself a chance with the exchequer. Hello, Alan. Hello. So you remember who I am? No, the face means nothing, but I never forget a bus. Don't you remember last Christmas? Christmas? Oh. Veronica! Hillary. Hillary, yes. Well, this is an unexpected pleasure. Alan, please. Well, I'm unbuttoning as fast as I can, woman. I mean, not now, Alan. I'm here in my official capacity as Mrs. Thatcher's secretary. Not as the gullible little spinster whom you ravished on the woolsack when the lords were in recess. Oh, that was you. Oh, thank God. I've had this recurring nightmare that I nodded Lord Hailsham. Don't worry, Alan. Everyone knows it was me you took advantage of. They do? How? Because on the door of the toilet in the male member's shower room, you've carved. Alan Bastards had Hillary Sissons. And she wasn't bad, but he was better. <laughs> anyway, the reason for this visit is in the tea room last Thursday evening, Mrs. Thatcher forsook her usual hobnob to purchase a bath bun. Heavens, hold the front page. It was stale. As you're the secretary for the stale food disposal working group for the parliamentary catering committee, the PM wants your assurance that such an outrage will not reoccur. Very well. You may give her my word. Now, uh, shoot. Although as full metal cammy has the digestion capacity of size well B, I doubt if she'd be reaching for the rainy as if she'd eaten a stale bath, let alone bath bun. Oh, Alan, you're so witty. Yes, I am, aren't I? And I love your aftershave. What is it? I'm not wearing any. You can just smell the money in my wallet. Oh, Alan. What I want to know, Inspector, is why a jet-setting, silk-wearing sex machine like you should want to get involved with running the stale food subcommittee. Oh, uh, that's simple. <laughs> Norman Tebbit hates me. <laughs> I love you, Alan. I thought you were just here in your official capacity. My lunch hour's just started. <laughs> oh, well. Hello, Alan. <laughs> Hello, Piers. Uh, this is Hilary Sissons, the Prime Minister's secretary. Uh, hello. <laughs> oh, Hilary Sissons. Oh, there's something really funny written about her on the toilet door in the men's shower room. <laughs> Where have you been, Piers? Pardon? I want you to do something very important for me. I see Norman Tebbit, Norman Tebbit, Nicholas Ridley, Nicholas Ridley. Ah, here we are. Cecil Parkinson. Now, this is Cecil's credit card. As you can see, it's quite an easy signature to copy because he can't do joined up writing. <laughs> you mean you've stolen Cecil's credit card? Don't be disgusting. Park is a very busy man. What with a star chamber to run and a little child to uh, avoid. <laughs> he pays me to do his shopping for him. Silly me. Silly you. <laughs> <laughs> now, I want you to go down to Garrard's the Jewellers. They're holding for me a diamond-encrusted Deladier lobster watch. It uh, costs £14,750. Yes, I've just got to make a phone call first. What? Hello? Yes, it's me, darling. Meow, meow. <laughs> yes, it, it, it's been so long, sweetness. Yes, but it's gone down now, though. <laughs> yes, he wants me to take Cecil Parkinson's credit card. What? Oh, do you? Well, I, I didn't think. No, right, I'll tell you, my little pussy. Right. Okay. Bye bye. Meow, meow. <laughs> Clarissa says I mustn't. And who the hell is Clarissa? <laughs> My fiance. I didn't know you were getting married. I didn't know that Quasimodo had a sister. <laughs> but you can't have forgotten that the wedding's this weekend. You promised to be my best man. I paid you five hundred pounds. Look, here's the receipt. No can do this weekend, Piers. I'm supposed to be in Beverly Hills. Well, you could have told me you were going to be in America. I'm not going to America. Beverly Hills is a VDU operator in the Department of Education. <laughs> in fact, as I don't seem to have a diamond-encrusted Deladier lobster watch on my wrist at the moment, perhaps I should phone up Beverly and find out exactly what time I'm meeting her on the weekend of your wedding. Gosh, what a shame that I haven't got a nice ticky-tocky watch. All right. Give me the credit card. I'll go and get your king prawn watch. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the last day and I ever run for you, Alan. Clarissa says when we're married, you won't be able to kick me around anymore. <laughs> well, I'd better make the most of it now, then, hadn't I? Here we are. What a ghastly little place. Good. Just in time for cocktails. Is that you watch your wedding? Yes, it is. It's a present from Cecil Parkinson. You like it? Yeah, it's very flashy, rather typically new. I mean, you don't hunt, you can't shoot, you can't ride. Everybody will see you for the pathetic little urban yacht. You really are. What's that, eh? Don't frighten the horses. God had meant us to ride horses. He would have given us all enormous asses. Like that woman's got hit on her back. Get out of the way, you bloody yokels! <laughs> You 
frighten the horses. Have you no manners? Your wife is fucking my Binkley. I'm not an angry insurance company, you old fart. I'll give you the name of my whip maker, sir. Oh, congratulations. Now I know you're going to enjoy this weekend. Come on, I hate the bloody country. Oh. Continents, Pat. And uh, sorry. Piers. Piers, you can't marry that. I mean, I know you're desperate and, and the parents are probably loaded, but really, well, that's not Clarissa. That's her brother, Keith. Your roast peacock, Mr. Bastard. Perhaps you could run down a cow for us tomorrow to help with the wedding breakfast. Okay, what time will you be grazing? <laughs> Damn, Tally should be shot. What I want to know is, if I can't be best man, why can't I be a bridesmaid? Please go to your room. <sighs> and I wanted Nigel Cochran to come to my wedding. I am not having that nouveau riche pop singer under my roof. He's almost as vulgar as Bastard. And he uses a white Rolls Royce to go to Sainsbury's. <laughs> Sainsbury's? Tesco's? <laughs> <laughs> well, if we have all had sufficient, we will take coffee in the library. Uh, which is where we keep the books, <laughs> Mr. Bastard. Oh, really? My accountant looks after mine. <laughs> yes! Alan! Come say hello. <laughs> we haven't had the chance to exchange three words, and there's one or two things I feel I want to sort out with you, you know. Uh, about Piers. Well, can't we discuss it over coffee? <laughs> not really, no. You see, there are things about Piers that not even Piers himself knows. <sighs> There's a terrible secret disease that runs through the Fletcher Dervish family. <sighs> His mother told me about it on her deathbed. His mother isn't dead. <laughs> see? Oh, good. Great. They found another liver then. That's wonderful news. <laughs> you should change your name to Colon, Mr. Bastard. You're so full of crap. <laughs> Clarissa! Clarissa! <laughs> You're too good for Piers. I love you. No. No, no, I do. I, I, I want you. I, I, uh, come away with me and I'll make you rich beyond the dreams of Joan Collins. All right, look, marry me. You're already married. Yeah, well, it's a mere technicality. <laughs> I'm an honorary member of the Kuwaiti royal family. I can have as many wives as I want. I have no intention of abandoning my darling Piers. But you can't say that. I, I'll kill myself. Life without you wouldn't be worth living. Oh, balls. Yeah. You don't love me. You just want to get gynecological with me, don't you? <laughs> well, put it like that. <laughs> well, if it's hot sex you want, why not just come out with it instead of all this rubbish about love? Yeah, but if I did, you'd just laugh in my face, wouldn't you? And if you're no good, come on, <laughs> let's do it on the table. It's a bit hard, isn't it? The time for weak smutty jokes is over, Alan. <laughs> let's see this huge majority I'm always hearing about. <laughs> but I thought you were always going to be paying for the peers. Of course, once we're married. <laughs> <laughs> I was incredible. <laughs> and you came a close second. <laughs> What's funny? You just reminded me of a song. <laughs> I always do. Which one? When I Fall in Love? The biggest aspidistra in the world? No, you can't get quicker than a quick fit fitter. <laughs> I must bring them up and tell them you can. It's quality that counts, Clarissa, not quantity. Then you fail on both counts. I've been more turned on leaning against the tumble dryer. <laughs> I should have known what sort of lay you be when I saw your watch. Piers may be no Don Juan, but compared to you, he's Warren Beatty. 
What do you mean you've done it with Piers? Yes, of course, and Warren Beatty. <laughs> I'm telling you, Alan Fassard, Piers is not going to be your stooge anymore. He's not going to run your little criminal errands or pay for the rent of your felt tip. Piers Fletcher Dervish <laughs> is going to be my husband and I intend to look after him. Now, shall we join the others and pretend this sordid little interlude never happened, which is almost true? <laughs> you smug bitch. I had to give up my place in the British Ladies' Olympic Judo team to marry Piers, so I'm not about to let you get in my way. Wasn't a full pose to make one feel horny. No. And there's a 13 amp socket right by the bed. <laughs> Not tonight, Sarah. Not this year, you mean. We haven't had sex since Nigel Lawson cut the top level of income tax to 40 before. <laughs> Get off! Well, you're just peeved because Clarissa didn't come across. Come across? Where do you pick up these loutish expressions? Halton Price Shopping Precinct, where I pick up the louts that use them. Big, strong, sweaty, tattooed oh, farm labourers who can do it for hours on end. I am not interested in your fantasies, Sarah. Yeah, I know that. And for your information, I wasn't trying to seduce Clarissa. Well, it shouldn't be too difficult. The girls are nymphomaniac. actually screw anything in trousers. Really? Can I borrow your pyjama bottle? I am serious. Piers is my best friend. I've got to do something to wreck this marriage. You're crazy. The wedding's tomorrow. What are you going to do? Kill her? Last minute nerves. I suffered from them. My mistake was, I still turned up. Look, I've got another wedding at midday. What time do you make it? Oh, well, <clears throat> I make it 11 16. Don't mind me saying so, Mr. Bastard. That's a very vulgar watch. Uh, I suppose they've had an accident. Oh, yes, that's probably it. Oh, well, <laughs> let's all go home then. Come on, darling. <laughs> Poor girl is obviously far too distressed. The wedding can't possibly go ahead now. It was ordained for a remedy against sin to avoid fornication. That such persons as have not the gift of continency might marry and keep themselves undefiled. Unto which holy estate these two persons present come now to be joined. Therefore, if any man can show any just cause or impediment why they may not lawfully be joined together, let him now speak I or... I know an impediment! <laughs> Piers Fletcher Dervish is my awful wedded husband. And I'm his wife. Ooh. He promised me the world, and he left me to rot in Chitton Sudbury. <laughs> and there's another young and I'm the one. Oh. Yes. How could you? I've never seen her before in my life, darling. The time for lying is over, Piers. Be a man, not a louse. Don't be like Cecil. Stand by the poor. <laughs> Very embarrassing. No, it isn't, Vicar. It isn't embarrassing at all. Someone's put the woman up to it, and I think I know who. Yes. Fletcher Dervish. Oh, bloody no. The girl's an actress. She was an extra in Brookside only the other week. Extra, darling. Do you mind? I had three lines and it was Rockcliffe's babies. <laughs> 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 
Oh, hello. closest friend in the whole wide, wide world, Alan Bastard, MP. It, it was Alan, using his influence as a member of the House of Commons Catering Committee, who managed to arrange tonight's surprise menu at such short notice. Thank you. <laughs> Lord Hazlitt, vicar, bride and groom, ladies and gentlemen, first I must thank Piers for his kind words. He's a simple soul, but it's Heart's in the right place. <laughs> Although I can't say the same for his stomach. But frankly, when I was asked to be best man, I demurred. <laughs> it's a weighty honour. And besides, I was on a promise with a busty clerical officer who works underneath Kenneth Baker. <laughs> However, as I'd conned peers out of £500 to be his best man, I had to turn up. <laughs> no, no, don't laugh. It's all true. But when I saw Clarissa, everything <laughs> fitted into place. Quite snugly. <laughs> Although how Piers ever managed to pull such a luscious piece of upper-class tail is beyond me. <laughs> I only hope that Clarissa's sexual appetite, which I confess I've been a party to, and it was quite a party, doesn't do for Piers' body what the cruel roulette wheel of heredity has done for his mind. <laughs> well, Piers thanked me very effusively for arranging the catering at such late notice. Well, it was the least I could do after cancelling Harrods. <laughs> And as the secretary of the Stale Food Disposal Working Group of the House of Commons Catering Committee, it was easy for me to lay my hands on two dozen portions of poached salmonella oh. and the five gallons of botulism sorbet, which seemed to have gone down so well. <laughs> and now it seemed to be coming up with similar ease. Well, as a self-made lower middle class Tory who's pulled himself up by dint of his own talent and unscrupulousness, I can't tell you how happy it makes me to see all you landowning upper-class toss pots puking your rings. And that goes double for my Sarah here, who is to wifely loyalty what Edwina Curry is to help the aged. Those of you who managed to recover will remember this as a rather unusual wedding. And Clarissa Fletcher Dervish will know that I'm a very dangerous man to cross. Ah! Oh. Ah, so. So, if you'd all like to charge your glasses, and be upstanding? No? Then I give you the toast. Piers and Clarissa. Thank you.